Hey everybody, and welcome back. I have a huge project which is nearing completion. The video should be out two weeks or so if everything goes well after you're seeing this video. If you want early access to it, you're going to have to join Patreon, but that's another story. So I have these brushless motors. These are now discontinued, so don't bother looking for them on uh, Hobby King, but they're NTM Prop Drive 2826S 1200KV. And I spec'd these motors for these 10 inch propellers years ago when I bought them. So this motor is perfectly capable of running this 10 inch propeller. But because of limitations on the bed size of my 3D printer, and because uh, I wasn't paying very close attention when I made the CAD model, the design I made does not fit a 10 inch propeller. The maximum size I could fit is about a six inch propeller, so this size. But this six inch propeller will give us far less thrust than this 10 inch propeller. So the solution is to add blades, correct? Well, it's not that simple. To explain, I'm gonna have to get a little technical, but if you don't want to see that, just skip down in the chapters below. So how do motors work? Well, this one is a brushless motor. It's a little bit more complex, but the basics are the same. You apply a voltage to the windings inside of this motor and it creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field both attracts and repels different poles of magnets installed inside the motor. One part of the motor stays still, which is the stator, and the other one rotates, which is the rotor. So this one here has a rating of 1000 kV. kV means this one will do 1000 RPM for every volt you apply to it. So if you apply 10 volts onto this motor, it'll do 10,000 RPM, but this is at zero load. What happens is the magnetic fields created by the electromagnet in here will push and pull on the magnets on the inside, making the rotor spin. That can go up to infinity in theory, but the spinning and the fact that there's magnets inside uh, with the electromagnetic field will cause back EMF, which is an electromagnetic field which opposes the one that we want, the one that we create on purpose. When those two sort of balance out, that's when your motor reaches its max RPM, which is a theoretical 1000 per volt for this specific motor. Let's keep that in mind as we go on. So the voltage maximum that you can apply to this motor is 15 volts, and that's a factor on the insulation of the magnet wire inside. So the magnet wire is just copper wire, but it's coated with a varnish. The thickness of that varnish di dictates its insulation qualities, and anything over 15 volts in this specific motor risks breaking down the insulation qualities of that varnish and shorting the winding to its neighbor. And if that happens, you lose efficiency. The current maximum on this one is 15 amps, and that's a function of how thick, how wide the diameter of that magnet wire is. The thicker the magnet wire, the more current you can put in. Well, you probably are thinking, why don't they just use really thick insulation, really thick wires? Well, then you won't be able to wind it around as many times, and that'll weaken your magnetic field. So this whole thing is just, you know, a balancing act. These two figures, the voltage max and the current max, those are just theoretical maximums based on the wire that they used to make these motors. This power max of 235 watts on this motor, don't forget about 750 watts to a horsepower, so something like a third of a horsepower in this little guy, that's the important part. That's how much total heat we can generate on the inside of here without melting anything. So that's the amount of work this thing can do. And that brings us to our propellers. You see, in principle, the wider your propeller, the bigger the diameter of the propeller, the lower the RPM of the motor, that's design RPM, not forcing it because it's working so hard, um, makes it the most efficient. You see, a propeller disturbs the air when it runs through it. And the cleaner, the least disturbed the air, 
that the propeller has access to is the more efficiency it will have. So a two blade, really wide diameter and really shallow pitch propeller will be the most efficient. But in the real world, that's just not always possible. So I'd spec these propellers, 10 inch, uh, 10 inch diameter by 45 pitch. And the 45 pitch means it's uh, 4.5 inches that it wants to go forward in one revolution. So that was properly spec'd for this motor. Because of my design constraints, I had to go down to a six inch diameter. Well, since I'm stuck at six inches and there's only so much pitch you can add before that diagonal here becomes basically a straight up and down line, the only way I can gain more thrust back and lower the RPMs is to add more blades. So this one here, is a 6, 6042. So this one will do 4.2 inches per, per rotation, but it has three blades. So it's basically working about a third harder. It's not quite a third harder because these things will create um, more turbulence for the upcoming blades, but it's it does go up in work. Now, the, the other one I have here is a 6050, so a five, five inch travel for one rotation and it's a six inch diameter. However, it's not quite a six inch diameter. So this one is actually a bit too long for my purpose. You see it sticks out on both sides here. But I'm gonna put it in the test rig anyways. There are calculators to figure out what size and what pitch of blade you, you can use for your specific motor, but they're kind of expensive and I'm also limited by two things. I'm limited by the diameter that I can use because of my design and the size of typical 3D printers. But I'm also limited with the propellers that I have available to me. So in six inch, I got this 642 and this uh, 6050, 6042 and 6050. Um, but even these, this one is too big. So I might have to even trim the ends. All this boils down to you should always do some bench testing. And that is the rig I have built and that's the rig I will show you and that's what we're gonna be using today. So here's my test rig. I've got this motor here mounted onto a piece of 2020 extrusion. The length really doesn't matter for this and I will show you why momentarily. Um, this is a speed controller uh, you need a special speed controller for brushless motors. You need one specific for them. But there's the brushless motor there. And these are just bolted in using these sort of T-nuts. So you can get these aluminum T-nuts specifically for the 2020 extrusions. Uh, it's also just tied down with a little bit of Velcro strap here. The on-off switch is there. And I'm going to be using this servo tester in order to control this whole thing. So I'll be able to throttle it up and down with this little knob here. Now, this is gonna be making a lot of thrust and a lot of wind. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit chaotic. And I've got a screw, an M4 screw inside of one of those T-nuts just hanging down there. And you'll see what this is for momentarily. Also, I have this long board here with these brackets. Now these brackets, have these holes into them where I have these bolts and these bolts have to be long enough to go through and touch the extrusion in there without, these are those T-nuts, but without actually bolting it to this. So it has to be able to pivot, but also has to be long enough so that this thing doesn't like try to buzz off on me, you know, and go, go flying. So this has a lot of resistance this way. So that is going to be secured in place. It's going to be sort of clamped to my bench. Then I'll have this scale here with a readout. So we'll be able to see the thrust this pre th these create in grams. So the amount of force pushing backwards on my device will be measured in grams and we'll be able to tell which one creates more thrust. But we also need to make sure we are under current and under power. 
So that's where this comes in. I will be feeding it from this Readin RD6018, link in the description if you want to get your own. Um, this will be supplying the voltage and current. I'll be setting this up as if it was a three cell lithium battery. And I also have this chart where I can actually check, you know, I can keep track of all my figures. Um, the only thing is I'm not sure if this speed controller can actually do four cell. These motors can do four cell, but I uh, don't know if the speed controller can. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. We may just skip that. And I'll be powering it through this lead I made with an XT60 and some banana connectors. So let me put that all together and uh, we can get started here. And so here is the setup. I've got my 10 inch prop. I've got it spinning the correct direction. I've got my scale. Whoa. I've got my scale uh, just about zeroed. Fortunately, it does move around a little bit. There we go. It, it's fine. Within a couple grams is fine. Um, I've got my voltage set to three cell. And basically, the only thing you need to do now is duck for cover and uh, give it full throttle. So here it goes. Just got to repeat that test on all the propellers and I'll let you guys know. Well, the good news is the rig worked. The bad news is um, I'm going to hope that 400 grams is enough thrust. I don't think it is, but anyways, let's look at the breakdown. So for a 1045 10 inch prop for 4.5 inch pitch, we got a thousand grams, a kilogram of force that's uh 2.2 pounds or so that's quite a bit of thrust that is good thrust uh but at 15.6 amps so we were like max max maxing this motor out uh, 188 watts so it'll stay cool but man that current is kind of like getting close um now we just moved down to a six inch prop two blades uh, 225 grams so you can see there's a big difference there's a quarter you, you go down um, less than half right or, or or yeah you go down by four inches um, from 10 inch to a six inch and you lose three quarters of the the thrust and that's why because if you look the current is super low 2.5 amps and 30 watts so this motor wasn't working hard enough to make that to make any decent thrust the rpms need to go way higher to make thrust at that uh, with this prop um, the three blade prop this red one here it did 400 grams so that's just under a pound of thrust and this is the this is the prop i want to use because it fits in my cowling if i try the if i try this four bladed one i have to trim down the blades and and honestly, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that while maintaining a good balance on it. But this is the one I want to use, and I got only 400 grams out of it. 5.2 amps, 61 watts. This motor is going to stay super cool. The battery is going to last forever, but I'm not going to get a lot of thrust. I don't know. Well, we're going to see. Uh, then this one here, 550 grams of thrust. If you see, it's not even that much more thrust right 550 uh, and it doesn't fit I have to modify it 9.2 amps 110 watts so still this motor is going to be running cool but really the what this is boiling down to is for a six inch prop these are not the correct motors for it it is what it is um, because I was panicking I didn't think this thing would move fast enough or at all with this uh, three bladed uh, prop I had to change the speed controller to this uh, Turnigy plush speed controller because it can handle four cell voltage four cells uh, so this was done at 12 volts uh, four cells is 16.8 volts fully charged so technically this motor shouldn't be able to handle it but it did it, it did in this case enough to do the test at least 660 grams so uh, you know 50 percent improvement for just you know 33% uh, more voltage uh, and I've got a little bit more amperage and double the wattage so double the work 
done by this thing. So yeah, in situ it might be different, like inside the cowl there could be some sort of uh, forces, but um, yeah, that remains to be seen. But this video is not about that. This video is about this test rig here, and it works absolutely perfectly. Um, there could be some improvements, but I will release the design files for the, these things on Thingiverse and uh, maybe some other ones, but uh, I'll let you know in the comments below. If you have guesses as to what this project is about, um, it is not a quadcopter, so guess again, but uh, let me know in the comments below what you think it is, and um, who knows, maybe you'll get it right. Thanks for watching.